Jean-François de Rosier. In 1785, French physicist Jean-François de Rosier attempted to become the first person to cross the English Channel by air, but instead of using a standard hot air balloon, he created a hybrid, combining hot air with a hydrogen balloon. It was a deadly combination. Roughly 30 minutes into the flight, the flammable hydrogen ignited. The balloon exploded mid-air and plummeted from over 1,500 feet. De Rosier and his companion were killed instantly, making him the first recorded victim of an aviation accident, ironically caused by the very elements he studied. Max Vallier, an Austrian rocketry pioneer, Max Vallier was obsessed with turning rocket propulsion into a viable means of transportation. He created rocket-powered sleds and even cars. But in 1930, while testing a liquid-fueled rocket engine in his lab, it exploded violently. A piece of shrapnel struck him in the chest and killed him on the spot. The cruel irony? He had switched to liquid fuel because it was supposed to be safer than solid fuel. His ambition to usher in a new era of travel ended in a fatal misfire. Marie Curie, a two-time Nobel Prize winner and one of the most iconic scientists in history, Marie Curie discovered the elements polonium and radium and coined the term radioactivity. But in the early 1900s, no one fully understood the dangers of radiation. She carried radioactive materials in her pockets, kept glowing samples in her drawers, and even documented her own radiation burns like trophies. Over the years, the exposure caused severe damage to her bone marrow. She eventually died of a plastic anemia in 1934. Her research changed the world, and it quietly killed her. Harutun Krikor Daglian Jr. Daglian was a young physicist working on the Manhattan Project in 1945. During an experiment with a plutonium core, he accidentally dropped a brick of tungsten carbide onto the core, causing it to go supercritical, a sudden burst of deadly neutron radiation. He tried to disassemble it quickly, but it was too late. He received a lethal dose and died 25 days later. The core would go on to be known as the Demon Core, having claimed more than one victim. Louis Slotin. Just nine months after Daglian's death, physicist Louis Slotin became the second victim of the Demon Core. He was demonstrating a criticality experiment, manually lowering a beryllium hemisphere over the plutonium core using only a screwdriver. The tool slipped, the hemispheres closed, and a blinding blue flash filled the room. Slotin instinctively pulled them apart, saving everyone else present, but absorbing a fatal dose himself. He died in agony nine days later, knowing he had seconds to seal his own fate. Franz Reichelt Franz Reichelt, an Austrian-born tailor living in Paris, was obsessed with solving a deadly problem how to make parachutes wearable. He designed a bizarre hybrid between a coat and a parachute, a bulky contraption with fabric wings that extended when spread. He tested it several times using dummies dropped from buildings, and every single test failed. The dummies crashed to the ground like bricks, but Reichelt was undeterred. He was convinced the suit would work if tested with a real person, and that person, he decided, would be himself. On a cold morning in February 1912, he climbed to the first platform of the Eiffel Tower, over 50 meters above the ground. A crowd gathered below. Newsreel cameras were rolling. Authorities were skeptical, but Reichelt reassured everyone he had tested the suit thoroughly. Without hesitation, he jumped. The suit barely opened. It twisted and flapped uselessly as Reichelt plummeted straight down. He struck the frozen ground with terrifying force, dying instantly. His body left a crater in the soil beneath the tower. The entire incident was captured on film, one of the earliest fatal accidents ever recorded. Alexander Bogdanov Alexander Bogdanov was a Russian physician, philosopher, and early science fiction writer who believed he could slow aging, or even reverse it, through blood transfusions. In the 1920s, he founded the Institute for Blood Transfusion in Moscow and began experimenting on himself, receiving blood from young donors. After each transfusion, he claimed to feel stronger, with sharper vision and fewer signs of aging. But in 1928, he used blood from a student who unknowingly carried both malaria and tuberculosis. With no proper screening or sterilization methods in place, the transfusion proved fatal. Bogdanov died days later, ironically killed by the very blood he believed would grant him immortality. Sir David Brewster, a brilliant Scottish physicist who revolutionized optics and invented the kaleidoscope. Toward the end of his life, he was reportedly obsessed with optical illusions and visual distortion. Some lesser-known accounts suggest he died mentally deteriorated after prolonged exposure to intense light and mirror experiments. While most records list natural causes, the eerie rumors of him going mad from his own optical devices still linger in scientific folklore. Thomas Midgley Jr. One of the most destructive inventors in history, Midgley developed both leaded gasoline and chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, unaware of the catastrophic environmental impact they would have. 
Later in life, polio left him paralyzed, and he designed a complex system of ropes and pulleys to help lift himself out of bed. In 1944, he became entangled in the device and was strangled to death. A man killed by his own invention, again, Sylvester H. Roper, an American inventor who created one of the earliest steam-powered motorcycles. In 1896, during a demonstration at a bicycle track in Boston, Roper was seen speeding at 40 miles per hour, a staggering speed at the time. Suddenly, he fell off and died. Some believe he suffered a heart attack from the excitement. Others say the motorcycle malfunctioned. Either way, he may have become the first person in history to die in a motorcycle crash on a bike of his own design. Andrei Chelesnyakov, a Soviet scientist involved in developing chemical weapons. In the 1980s, he was exposed to a nerve agent known as Substance 33 during a laboratory accident. Though he received immediate treatment and initially survived, his health steadily declined. He suffered from insomnia, liver failure, speech issues, and partial paralysis. He died six years later, a slow-motion death caused by a chemical that didn't even exist on paper at the time. Carl Wilhelm Scheele, a brilliant 18th-century chemist who discovered oxygen independently of Joseph Priestley, along with chlorine, manganese, and several other elements. But Scheele had a dangerous habit. He smelled and tasted everything he worked with. Mercury, cyanide, arsenic, all passed his lips at some point. In 1786, he died suddenly at age 43. Though the exact cause is unclear, it's widely believed he was slowly poisoned by years of exposure to toxic chemicals. Gilbert Newton Lewis, a giant in the field of physical chemistry and known for the Lewis dot structure. Lewis had a long-standing rivalry with physicist Irving Langmuir. In 1946, after a meeting where Langmuir was awarded credit for discoveries Lewis felt were rightfully his, Lewis returned to his lab, where he was found dead hours later. A bottle of cyanide was nearby, and the room smelled of it. Some say it was suicide, others claim it was an accident. Either way, a brilliant mind faded under the weight of bitterness and disappointment. Jack Parsons, a co-founder of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Parsons was both a brilliant rocket scientist and an occultist who followed Aleister Crowley. In 1952, he was mixing volatile chemicals in his home lab when a massive explosion tore through the building. He was killed instantly, with body parts found scattered across the room. Some believe it was an accident. Others whispered darker theories, sabotage, ritual gone wrong, or self-destruction. With Parsons, the line between science and mysticism was always dangerously thin. Michael Dworkin, a little-known but real case from the late 20th century. Dr. Dworkin was studying the effects of chemical preservatives and toxins in everyday products. In an attempt to demonstrate how common household items release poisonous fumes, he sealed himself inside a specially designed airtight chamber with treated materials. He miscalculated the exposure limits. By the time colleagues found him, he had already succumbed to toxic buildup. A man who warned of invisible dangers, taken by the very vapors he studied. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe for similar ones and feel free to drop suggestions for the next video in the comments.